people on the Day of Judgment, when you meet this person who is sitting in the league of prophets and just rulers and leaders and reformers throughout history, and what did you do to get here? I resisted my desire when there was an open opportunity for me to fulfill it. All I did was I held myself back from that which was displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in an authentic hadith, ittaqil maharim takun a'bad al-nas. Ittaqil maharim takun a'bad al-nas. Have taqwa in regards to those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and you're going to be of the greatest class of worshippers. Takun a'bad al-nas. Warda bima qasam Allahu lak takun aqna al-nas. Be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with what Allah has apportioned to you, and you will be the richest of people. It's a profound hadith for many different reasons, but particularly as it pertains to this talk. You know, you usually in this life get celebrated because of the things that you do. And most of the people that are celebrated on the Day of Judgment are celebrated for things they didn't do. That's what the Prophet is saying because they held themselves back from things that were displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah knows how hard that is. And when you do that for His sake, you are expressing a level of devotion. You're expressing a level of dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that puts you in the ranks of prophets and martyrs. Think about how incredible that is. And I want you to think about this from a practical perspective. Is it harder for you to stay up all night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and pray in the masjid and listen to an inspiring khatira and make dua? Or is it harder for you to walk away from a relationship that you know is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when every fiber of your being desires that relationship? Which one's more difficult? And that's where the greater reward is. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look to the certificates that you have. Allah does not look to the accolades. Allah does not look to the quantity of things. Allah looks at the depth of the quality of your sacrifice. What are you willing to give up for my sake? What are you willing to walk away from for my sake? What are you willing to strive for for my sake? Because good deeds make you feel good anyway, and so people will naturally incline towards all sorts of good deeds. Because they render a certain type of goodness inside of you, you feel good. You go to Salat al-Fajr, you come to a conference, you read Qur'an, yes, you might be tired, you might have sacrificed sleep, you might have sacrificed something else, but you feel good. Your soul immediately feels good. Your mood changes, you feel happy, emotionally satisfied, mentally set. But when you walk away from something that your heart desires, that your soul desires, when you walk away from a craving, it's painful. And other people will not celebrate you for that. But the one who made you will celebrate you for it. Meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of all sorts of opportunities to displease Him and saying, Ya Allah, I tried. You know, many of you may have heard the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said to the companions of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, Wa Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Alayhim, Inna min wara'ikum ayyam as sabr That after you, O companions, are days that require great patience. To be patient in those days is like holding on to a burning hot coal. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, and for those who come after you that hold on to that burning hot coal is the reward of 50. He said, 50 of them, Ya Rasulullah. He said, no, 50 of you. Now, SubhanAllah, I want you to think about this. You've heard the story of Bilal. You've heard the story of Sumayya, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radiallahu anha. You've heard the stories of these people. Can any one of us say that we have been put to the test in regards to our sacrifices the way that they were? 
Can anyone in here say that they've been tested for La ilaha illallah the way that Bilal or Salman or Sumayya have been tested? Has anyone been forced to be subjected to starvation and dehydration and torture and been made a refugee and killed even by their parents for being a Muslim in here? Probably not. And so when the Prophet ﷺ is saying this to the companions, that after you, O companions, come these days that require an incredible amount of patience, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is not talking about sabrul mashaqqa, a sabr al mashaqqa, being patient with trial and tribulation. Rather, as many of the ulama explain, the Prophet وسلم, is talking about a sabr al shahwa, to be patient with your desires. What does that mean? You have more access to haram to fulfill your desires in a moment with your phone than any generation that came before you could ever imagine. It takes you seconds to corrupt your soul in a way that other people would have physically had to put themselves in a place to corrupt their soul. Other people would have had to worry about being seen, being caught. Other people would have had to worry about social stigma. Other people would have had to worry about the time and the place. You know, there's a mindset. Like when you're physically going to a place to commit haram, as you're going there, that gives you time to think about what you're going to do and perhaps turn you back away. That requires an element of dedication to your desires, if that makes sense. That you're going to go out there and commit haram somehow. Right now, it is literally the burning coal in your hands. This is your burning coal right here. It doesn't take you but a few seconds to fulfill your desires. It doesn't take you but a few seconds to taint your soul. Now when you can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having said that Ya Allah, the temptation of shaitan was literally in my hand and I spent my entire life trying to make sure that I feared you in regards to it, you might find yourself on the Day of Judgment amongst the prophets and the martyrs and the legends that you read about in books. Allahumma ameen. Because you restrained yourself. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah did not say that as for the one who prayed all night and fasted all day, that Jannah is their ending. Tell me where in the Qur'an it says that. Rather, those who restrain themselves for my sake, Jannah is their refuge. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who fear Allah in private, those who fear Allah in the unseen, they do what they can even as no one else sees them to be in a situation in which they are sacrificing the most the most belligerent of desires that they have, the tughyan of the nafs, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even trying to convert those moments of privacy into moments of worship. That's a wali of Allah. That's a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not a normal person. And so you don't have normal circumstances today. You don't have a normal set of temptations today. Everything about this time is abnormal. Everything about this time is abnormal. But that means that the reward of doing things that might seem seemingly insignificant is also abnormal. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ says, you have the reward of 50, bithnillahi ta'ala. And so I want you to remember this hadith, if you can, inshallah ta'ala, what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, ittaqil maharim, takun a'bad nas warda bima qasama Allah lak takun aghna nas be mindful or fear Allah in regards to the things that he has prohibited and you will be of the greatest of worshipers and be pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has apportioned to you and you will be the richest of people how many people think that i will be good with my religiosity I'll be good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll be satisfied with continuing to make dua if Allah just gives me this thing that I'm asking Him for. You condition your religiosity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, 
Look, I'm making dua. Oh Allah, give me what I'm asking you the way that I'm asking you for here and watch the way that I respond to what you're asking of me in the future. It doesn't work that way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Warda bima qasma Allahu lak. Look yourself in the mirror today and say, I am the richest person in the world because alhamdulillah, I have everything that I need to be a good Muslim. Allah has provided for me enough stability, enough security, a much love, enough blessing to where I feel sufficed. Alhamdulillah, everything Allah gives me, gives me as bonus because Allah gave me Islam. Allah gave me a sense of purpose. Allah gave me a mission. Allah gave me a paradise to seek that is eternally blessed, never boring, and never limited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to overcome the pull of our desires in private and in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to please Him with our set of circumstances.